If you're not big on lemon halves shoved up the vag, you could move on to trying something a little more medicinal. Is that a word? Is medicinal a word? I don't even know if that's a word. From swaddling shafts with animal intestines to cramming crocodile dung into places it definitely does not belong, humans throughout history have been willing to try almost anything to have sex without making babies. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, and today we're going through some of the creative but horrifying ways our ancestors have come up with for doing the deed with a lower chance to breed. First up we have ancient condoms. Long before the advent of the modern condom, which is typically made with polyurethane or latex, people of the past were wrapping and packing their goods with barriers made of all sorts of materials. Interestingly, as early as 3000 BC, King Minos of Crete is noted as saying that he used the bladder of a goat to protect his wife from the serpents and scorpions of his semen. But until much later in history, only the elite had access to such luxurious manner of barrier contraception, everyone else was relegated to using fabric like silk or linen to wrap the penis, or even making makeshift internal condoms out of plants and leaves. Honestly, these sound like just about the worst way to have sex that I can imagine. And I think given the mortality rates of pregnancy at the time, I probably would have just preferred to die alone having never experienced such pleasure. In fact, they even figured out that these condoms were actually relatively effective at preventing syphilis, which was a really common cause of soldier fatality around that time. And at the time, in the mid-1600s, there was an English civil war going on. So the government actually dispatched a whole bunch of condoms made of cattle and lamb and fish bladders and intestines to the military for the soldiers to decrease their chances of dying from their extracurricular activities because they needed them to fight the war. <laughs> Diaphragms are inserted into the vagina and they're meant to create a barrier or a block so the sperm can't gain access to the cervix to get into the uterus into the fallopian tubes. And in modern times, they're typically made of silicone or latex, but back in the days of scorpion sperm, they were much more creative with their materials. So we have historical accounts of using anything from lemon halves, which honestly sounds terrible, to algae and seaweed or even sea sponges to make diaphragms. But personally, my favorite and the one, honestly, if I was alive back in these days, I would choose to use were cups that were crafted out of opium. And yeah, you can absorb that through the vaginal wall. So I would assume there was, you know, something interesting about using those as well. Eventually, German gynecologist Friedrich Wald invented a rubber pessary that paved the way to the modern diaphragm. And in the 1850s, it was introduced to the United States by no other than Charles Goodyear. Yep the tire guy. But if you're not big on lodging lemons up there and the side effects of opium cups sound a little intimidating, you could always move on to trying some medicinal plants. Silphium is a historical plant that seems to be related to fennel and it was used in ancient Greece for everything from aphrodisiacs and medication to seasoning and perfume. It was so well loved at the time, in fact, that it was printed onto the currency of Cyrene, which is probably the only place that it actually grew. And the Greeks used it so much that they seem to have harvested it right into extinction. According to Greek physician Soranus of Ephesus, you could actually prevent pregnancy or even destroy an existing pregnancy with just a single monthly dose in a chickpea size amount of sylphium pods. It was so important to them at that time that Julius Caesar actually had a cache of sylphium pods, which is 1500 pounds stored away in the government treasury. Unfortunately, with the seeming extinction of sylphium pods, we're being forced to move on to a bit more accessible option called Queen Anne's Lace. Queen Anne's Lace is a flowering plant and Hippocrates of often misquoted do no harm fame was quite the fan. He stated that this could work as both an abortifacient and a contraceptive. And modern research does show that the seeds of this plant may have some effect at blocking progesterone production. So. He may have been onto something. But what if Queen Anne's lace isn't your thing, sylphium pods are now extinct, and a vaginal lemon vinaigrette just sounds a bit unsavory? Well, I have excellent news for you, because now we're moving on to crocodile poop. In the 1500 BC era, ancient Egyptians were using a mixture of crocodile dung, sodium bicarbonate, which was extracted from the ashes of burned plants, and honey into a ball that was a very thick, almost solid paste, 
which was inserted into the vagina prior to intercourse. S sounds exciting. If none of the above options appeal to you, you could always try holding your breath during sex and then vigorously sneezing the sperm right out of your uterus as Soreness had recommended, although he also thought you could only get pregnant during menstruation, so I'm not sure how reliable that advice will be. Or you could go with the 10th century Persian manner of jumping backwards seven or nine, exactly seven or nine, those were the magic numbers, times after intercourse, or even give a shot with tying a pair of weasel testicles to your thigh before you have sex. Let me know in the comments down below which method of contraception you decide to give a try. For legal reasons, that is a joke. Please do not use any of these as your actual manner of contraception. Subscribe to avoid missing any really valuable content like this, and I'll see you next Monday.